Here's a little quick video to show a new network plus Bluetooth receiver board capable of driving two speakers plus a subwoofer. It's from up to stream. Let's check it out. I say it's going to be a real short one just to show off the basic features of it. Today we're going to look at the up to stream amp 2.1. This is a self-contained Bluetooth receiver, network receiver with built-in amplifier. So there's a look at the board and the specifications are as follows. It has wireless connectivity. It's a 2.4 gigahertz 802.11 and that's the antenna for that. It also has Bluetooth 5 uh, SBS with the AAC and it has a USB host so it'll play music over USB. There's the USB input there. Um, it has a Bluetooth distance of 10 meters, operates between 12 and 24 volts. Of course, it'll connect to your, your Wi Fi router. Uh, the analog uh, input is 3.5 millimeter analog input, uh, and um, sp analog speaker outputs with, with a, a subwoofer. So inside here, there's a little header because this header plugs into the socket here, and you can connect your left speaker, right speaker, and sub speaker. And that's how we're going to connect this for testing it. Uh, speaker power is uh, 2 times 50 watts into 4 ohms plus 100 watts into 2, low, two ohm uh, bridge tied load. That's a 24 volts. Or 2 times 30 watts into 8 ohms plus 75 watts into 4 ohm for the subwoofer um, at, at uh, 24 volts. At 19 volts, it's 2 times 22 watts into 8 ohms plus 48 watt into 4 ohms um, for the uh, for the subwoofer and at 15 volts it's 2 times 15 watts again into 8 ohms and 30 watts into 4 ohms um, for the subwoofer. It supports FLAC, MP3, AAC, AAC+, ALAC, APE and WAVE formats and decoding 24 bits up to 192 kilohertz and it supports AirPlay, DLNA, UP and P, Spotify, Connect, QPlay. And there is a remote control optional for it, which it has the little remote receiver here. And I don't have the remote, didn't, the one I've got doesn't have the remote. I actually have a remote for this. I use an up to stream, uh, basically the same unit as this, minus the amplifier. And that's what, I, that's what I use to actually feed my system. I listen to it every day. The sound quality is excellent. And I have, I, I've shown that one before. It's the one that came in the little box. I have a couple of other boards like this as well. Uh, but we're going to show this one today. I'm going to connect it up to a pair of speakers, and uh, we'll connect it up to uh, to uh, Bluetooth, I guess, and maybe up to my network as well, and play around with that with using the app on my phone. Uh, and you control it from your phone. You download the app. There is included in the package. There's the QR codes for the up to stream or the four stream app uh, to operate the unit. So. First thing we'll do is we're going to connect the unit to my speakers and uh, we'll get power to it and then we'll, we'll hook it up and uh, play around with it a bit. For my main speakers I'm just going to use my standard JVC speakers that I have on my workbench for testing and I'm going to use this old Samsung subwoofer, it's just a passive subwoofer, there's no amplifier in this. We're going to hook, the, hook it up to this one for our sub. According to the, the labels on the circuit board here. Right channel plus and minus, or positive and negative. Left channel positive and negative. Subwoofer positive and negative. So here's my right channel. So it's going to go into these terminals here. Even comes with a little screwdriver to fasten down the screws. Okay, got the speakers all wired up. Plug snaps in like that. And uh, power the unit up by applying power. I have a power connector here connected to a 24 volt supply. So when it Power it up. It lights up green to indicate that there is power. We have volume control, bass and treble controls, which are nice on the unit. I'm going to uh, connect it to my phone now. So I'll open up my Four Stream app. Here, Four Stream. There we go. I'll look for a new a new device. I'm going to go. To add a device. I gotta go to the phone settings and I'm gonna look for sound system XXXX which is gonna be this one so I'm gonna go to settings there it is sound system F9 connecting 
and uh, configure it to my Wi-Fi system. So it's going to load. Okay, now it's, it's connected. I'm going to rename this sound system F9B9, which is what this one is. I'm going to rename it. Let's see here. We'll go to Rename. And uh, what will we call this one? We'll call this one Garage for lack of a better, a better name for it. Finish. So now this one's called Garage. So if I go into this one, and I can now change the input. It's now currently set to the line input. As you can see, it's flashing line here. But if I if I want to change the input on this thing, I just uh, go up to line in. Uh, if I go, if I select, for example, if I click on my music, uh, this will find my uh, music off of my server. It'll actually find the music on my phone too. But I can also find music on my server inside the house. Okay. Gives me a list of what I've got on my computer. If I go to uh, say all music, it should load up a directory. And if I pick something here, anyway, So when it's playing, you can select any track you want. You can dial up whatever you want. If I go to this one, for example, George Benson. You can control the volume through the phone as well as through the speaker. So I'm going to turn this down so I don't get hit with uh, copyright on this thing. The buttons here on the bass and treble if you press them in it resets them to flat so for example i've turned the bass all the way down to minimum we'll crank this up and i'll hit the button and it'll bring bass back flat can't play that can't play that i gotta I gotta find some royalty free music to play on this thing but this is playing off of my computer this is not actually on my phone this is actually playing from my computer in the house over the network and I can do it either over a Wi-Fi using the antenna here in the Wi-Fi module or I could plug it in directly to Ethernet so this something like this you could you could hide a module like this ideally you'd put it in a box but uh, you can hide a module like this um, in your system control it through your phone through your network and just have some a pair of speakers perfect like for an outdoor an outdoor speaker system a um, couple pair of speakers and a subwoofer and you're good to go with a little board like this again you'd want to put it in a, a box uh, a four four inch by five inch box should uh, handle this quite nicely and on the front here if you press on the volume control this will switch between inputs so as you can see it's lit up wi-fi now if i click over here it'll go to bluetooth and that'll disconnect it from my phone uh, line input and a usb input over here let me go to bluetooth i'm going to uh, fire up my other phone which does have some royalty free content on it and we'll see how it sounds now as i say i actually used the the other unit i've got the up to stream the preamp one, which is essentially the same unit minus the amplifier. It does everything else the same. It has two line inputs on it. And of course I can do network stuff. I can play stuff off of my computer using my phone to control it. But I typically, what I use it for, because the Bluetooth on it is so good, I actually have an old phone that I just have music on and I use, I just stream it from my phone. I just have an old, an old Samsung phone that uh, I don't use as a phone. I just use it as a, as a, uh, as a media player over Bluetooth because the sound quality off it is excellent. It'll play my FLAC files and everything uh, over Bluetooth and I've got their infrared remote so I can actually control the phone from the infrared remote. As you can see, it's showed up Garage. I click on Garage. It'll now pair it to the Bluetooth. It is now paired. The Bluetooth light has stopped flashing. And if I go into my music on this, I can play. Now this is royalty free stuff so I can get away with this one and uh, we'll just find something from Music Bakery to play. Now. 
Anyways, a couple of other features I did not go over on here. On the buttons here, as it says here for when you press the tone, the bass control, if you click it once, it resets your bass level to zero. But if you long press to decrease the crossover frequency by 10 hertz, you can set your crossover frequency from 80 down to up to 200 hertz. So if you long press it, it will decrease the crossover frequency for the subwoofer. And the same with the tone control. If you long press it, it'll increase the crossover frequency by 10 hertz. Another cool thing with this is uh, the online capability. So for example, if I go into my this one, and I do the same with my other one in the house, I can go in and select, say for example, tune in. I don't have, I don't subscribe to Spotify or any of those other uh, streaming services. I do have tune in, so I can pick local radio. So if I pick uh, Fox, for example, it will play it through. We'll pause that. Let's find let's find some talk radio that I can put on here. I can go into local radio here and uh, find my local station, the traffic station. Let's put the traffic station. Willingdon, but no, in front of Delta getting pushed back past Willingdon right now. Watch out for that. I can put that on. The night in the Oak Street Bridges, as Ray mentioned, there's a crash out here. Ninth Street northbound after the east-west connector over in the left lane. And uh, thankful that somebody called this in. Would have been hard to pick this out. It's not, well, I mean, it's a little busier than normal on Knight Street northbound. But, I mean, you always see these northbound delays from the Bridgeport merge. It's a little heavier than usual, sure. You got the, um... So with TuneIn, of course, you can pick up radio radio stations from all over the world and uh, and music. Pick whatever you want, right? And uh, Australia. So it gives you the full the full gauntlet of music through TuneIn and and many other services, all streamed through your Wi-Fi network. And of course, as I showed, you can play your own content that's on your hard drive or on your phone, either through your network or through Bluetooth, just using the Forstream app. Anyway, that's a quick look at the Up to Stream app 2.1, featuring a subwoofer and two channel output, 50 watts per channel, 100 watts for the subwoofer into four and two ohms, of course. Um, link to this one's in the description. We'll uh, catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.